Just Pratanga Prabhu described how Putra in the strength of 10,000 elephants uh, wanted to remove Krishna from her body while Krishna is sucking the milk, but he could not. Krishna did not do any effort. Krishna was completely like an innocent child, only six days old. He could not remove Putana. Uh, Putana could not remove Krishna. He so much strength. But how much strength Mother Yasuda has? More than because Krishna's mother. In one hand, Mother Yasuda caught Krishna or sit here. Then Krishna tried completely with all his power. Uh, but Krishna could not uh, stop Mother Yasuda going there. And then Krishna became very, very angry. And Mother Yasuda went and sprinkled some water and made the milk cool down. In the meantime, Krishna became very, very angry and found this big pot full of uh, yogurt and buttermilk. Mother Yasuda was preparing. And this pot is the cause of everything. Uh, and became very angry. Started to shake, but could not shake that part, very heavy part. Krishna is a small child and found the butter. The bottom part is very, very soft. And took a low down piece of that uh, grinding water and broke the bottom part and all the uh, yogurt started to spread in the ground. Became very happy. Next moment thinking, Mother will come and chastise me. Uh, what to do? Became very, very afraid. Started to escape. He saw one room is like, there is one room, there is one way to go out to the uh, road, outside. So Krishna entered that room, uh, but when he entered that room, he found the big, big butter pot is hanging. And how to reach there? Oh, there was a grinding motor. Uh, and then, that was upside down, he pushed the grinding motor and climbed on that. And then could reach the bottom pot and eating pot. In the meantime, so many crows, and monkeys came. Krishna is not only feeding them also. When in Ram Lila, when Krishna was Lord Ram, at the time these monkeys and these crows, they helped me so much in finding Goddess Sita, preparing the priest. But Lord Ram was at that time in the forest, he had nothing to feed them. Even could not give them anything. Weapons even could not give. Cloth, food could not give. But at that time Krishna fed and repaired their debt. Fed so, so much mark. In the meantime, Mother Asura came. Uh, who did this? Must be. Uh, when Lala had done this, he became really very, very naughty. Today I will chastise. I will discipline. Otherwise, he will become bigger. He will become so much uh, not my good image of my family. Then Mother Asura then started to search. How he found, how she found Krishna? Thief can do so many things still. But police can find out how there are some Krishna's small footprints uh, from the bottom milk was spreading going to that room. Then Mother Jasoda like completely soundlessly with taking a cane and entered that room. And Krishna is very very clever looking one eyes when Mother is come into the room. When she saw Mother Jasoda is coming approaching nearby, Krishna jumped and ran away in the street. Krishna is thinking Mother is very uh, housewife. And she will not come to the road because the road is so many people are there and she will be shy to come. But that day was Diwali, everybody was gone out, busy, then nobody was there in the house. Uh, they went to different uh, activities. So at that time, Mother Sita told, Today I will not leave you. I will go to the outside and I will definitely catch you and definitely give you punishment. The Krishna then started to run and Mother Sita also ran. Mother Sita was like in middle age, little fatty body and sweating and sweating and Krishna is running how? like in curved way, not straight very difficult to catch Krishna and Mother Sula's bread there were so many flowers uh, jasmine flowers dropping one by one open all the hairs as if the flowers telling oh Mother Yasoda you are not alone we, we are all with you we will today catch that thief uh, all together we will catch that thief today why will you escape? Then like this, Mother Rasuda running and running. So Mother Rasuda is representing devotee. Krishna's devotion towards his devotee and devotee's devotion towards If Who can catch Krishna? Whose devotion is more than what Krishna's uh, devotion towards his devotees? Then that devotee can catch Krishna. So Mother Rasuda's devotion is so much. At last, finally, he could catch Krishna. And then, he took Krishna in one hand and started to chastise. Oh, you are thief. 
Huh? You, you broke the pot? Who broke the pot? Oh, I did not break the pot. Who made that pot? He broke that pot. Oh, you are so expert in talking. <laughs> who fed these monkeys? Who made the monkeys? He fed the monkeys. Actually, it is like this. Actually, Krishna is telling truth. Who created the monkeys? Krishna created the monkeys. Like this, I told you are thief. Then Krishna telling, oh, I am not thief. In your dynasty, there is thief. In my Baba's dynasty, Nandava's dynasty, there is no thief. There was a pope in the Mother Yasoda's dynasty named Chorvas. Chor means thief. In that name, so Krishna was very intelligent in Arvind. Oh, very, very talkative. Today I am binding you. I started to go on the silk uh, thread, thread, is to bind the hair. Mother Yasoda started to bind Krishna in that hair and that rope. But could not bind. Uh, always two fingers short. Then again, he joined, asked all the sakhis from nearby houses, Oh, grief, the rope was joined so much, so many ropes, uh, even miles long. But Mother Sada even could not bind one round in the belly of Krishna. Even like the sakhis telling, Oh, Mother Yasuda, why are you trying to bind uh, your son? Uh, in his, in his forehead, in his pet, there is no bondage written. Brahma, Vidaka has not written the bondage in your son's pet. So how you can bind? The mother is telling, he is born from my womb. I definitely bind. Without binding him, I will not do anything. Do I so much determined. Like that, and so many, it became so long. Mother Sudha, uh, Krishna saw that mother is sweating all over his body, became very, very tired. Dushta Parishraman Kripaya Sevandane. Seeing the Mother Yasuda's condition, so much labor Mother Yasuda doing to bind Krishna. Krishna desired to accept bondage. As soon as Krishna is Supreme Lord, and how big is Krishna's stomach? It's very, very unlimited. Even whole universe, the rope can go to whole universe, cannot bind one round Krishna's belly. But Krishna, when desired the Lila Shakti, can make impossible possible. Agatan Ghatan Pati Shakti of Krishna can make impossible possible. Krishna desired to accept the bondage as when the one rope Mother Dasada could bind Krishna. Actually, the two fingers were short. What are the two fingers? One is the effort in the ever we are doing to achieve Krishna. The second one representing the mercy of Krishna. If our endeavor we are doing, but Krishna's mercy is not there, we can never bind Krishna. If Krishna's mercy is there, but we are not doing enough endeavor, we can never bind Krishna. So Mahaprabhu told this market nair and marjar nair. Uh, so the market nair means the monkey logic. The baby monkey always catch tightly the mother monkey. But mother monkey never takes any care, not never catch the monkey, baby monkey. The mother monkey is jumping from one branch to other branch. If that baby monkey is dropped, never take him again. Like this, if you doing so much labor, uh, hard labor, his mercy is not there, you can never get. Secondly, kitten, uh, the baby cat is staying one place, not doing any endeavor, a mother will come and take me from one place to other place. Always telling one place, meow, 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 and mother will check from one place to other place. Fully dependent, not does any endeavor. If both type of uh, devotees, never get, can never achieve Krishna. So like this, both is required, our endeavor and the mercy of Krishna. So Mother Dasuda thought, oh you are this, the call, uh, the crooked, and also the grinding mortar who helped you in doing these things, is also will bind both of you. Then Mother Dasuda bound the Krishna's hand in back side, and then bound in the grinding mortar, so that nobody can reach. And Mother Dasuda then went. And you tell after that, So, after this, Mother Yasoda, finally she binds Krishna to this grinding water and she places 
Krishna there in the yard uh, with the grinding water and there are two trees there. So these twin Arjuna trees, how they have come there, there is some history that once, previously, when Narada Muni... Krishna remembered the shop of Narada Rishi to Nankubar and Manigri. Yes. He remembered and he will have to keep the words, fulfill the words of Narada. Yes. So, again, begin. Want to tell the history of how they came? Very short, yes. Okay. <laughs> so, Krishna remembered the words of Narada Muni. That Narada Muni, he became, he was walking once in the uh, Nandan Kanan Gardens in the heavenly planets. That time, the sons of Kuvera, Nala Kuvera and Mani Griva, they were there sporting with some damsels of heaven and they were all naked. When Narada Muni came by that way, the damsels, they became embarrassed and they tried to clothe their bodies. But the two sons of Kuvera were too drunken and they did not do so. So, Narada Muni, he became uh, merciful upon them, seeing their drunken condition, he decided to give them a curse and a blessing. That you are standing naked like trees, therefore I curse you to become trees. So when they heard this curse, they became very upset and begged Narada Muni to give them some mercy. He said, I cannot remove my curse, but I bless you that you will become twin Arjun trees in the garden of Mother Yasoda and when Swayam Bhagavan Krishna comes, he will liberate you and break down those trees and liberate you. So, these two sons of Kuvera, Nala Kuvera and Mani Griva were in these twin Arjuna trees and Krishna was remembering that his great Bhagavad devotee, pure devotee, uh, Sri Narada Muni had made this uh, blessing upon them that they should become liberated by Sri Krishna. And so he began pulling the mortar and pulling the mortar with his body. He was crawling along, crawling along and pulling the mortar and that mortar came finally pulling, pulling and pulling down and the two trees crashed like a big crash and both of them came down. At that time when they came down, uh, Nalakuvera and Mani Griva exited from there. They made many prayers to Sri Krishna and they uh, thanked him for liberating him and they then went to uh, become uh, two poets, two kavis in Krishna's Leela where they uh, recite many uh, uh, pastimes of Sri Krishna. Meanwhile, at that time, uh, Nanda Maharaj returned and uh, he saw the big commotion was going on. He came and he asked what has happened here why these trees have come down, my lava almost became killed. Then uh, Mother Yasoda, she was also hysterical and she was weeping. So then Nanda Maharaj he untied uh, Krishna and he took Krishna in his lap. Krishna was weeping and weeping and he was holding Krishna in his lap. Then he was stroking him and just giving him shelter. Then Mother Yasoda, she was very upset. She wanted to give Krishna breast milk. But he was not willing to go. So Rohini went there. She said, oh, please, you come. Your mother wants you. She wants to give you breast milk. No, he said, I will not go to Maya. She has tied me here and caused this problem. I am going to stay on the lap of my father, and I will just stay here, and I will not go. So then Rohini being very intelligent, and she told, oh, if you will not go, then maybe your mother, she will be a leave this world and she will be very upset. So then he began weeping and weeping. Then he goes to his mother and he takes then again breast milk from his mother and this uh, he becomes very, very happy and Mother Yasoda becomes happy and Nanda Maharaj becomes
So <clears throat> we're hearing about the different demons that Krishna is dispatching one after another. Actually, each one of these demons represents some fault or some unwanted desire that is present in the heart of all of us. They were here in these pastimes and this fault can leave us by the power of hearing of Krishna's activities. Even though Krishna destroyed so many demons, still some things that only Guru can do, that Krishna has specifically delegated towards his devotees. Krishna has his area of responsibility, but the devotee also has his area of responsibility. So last night we heard so much about the glories of Guru, that when Krishna's mercy comes in a condensed form, that is the spiritual master, and Krishna gives mercy to, the, to us in the form of the best of the devotees, that is, the spiritual master. The, the original spiritual master, he is Baladev Prabhu, Akanda Guru Takta. That means my guru, your guru, his guru, all are manifestations of Sri Baladev Prabhu. And in the pastimes of Krishna, three demons are specifically delegated to Baladev Prabhu. That is Vivida Gorilla, Pralambasur, and Denakusur. Denakusur represents foolishness or ignorance. Like we pray, Omagyan, Timaranda, Syagyan, Anjana, Salanka, Chakshur, Anmalita, Mela, Tasmai, Sri, Guru Vedama. I give my pranams to Gurudev. Why? Because Gurudev removes the darkness of ignorance. How? By manifesting the light of devotion within the heart of the disciple. So, Denikasur, he had taken the form of a donkey. Actually, he was a perfected yogi. He could assume any form. But he chose the form of a donkey because donkey represents foolishness personified. Like in English, we say, come on, man, don't be a donkey. Don't be an ass, dumbass, jackass. Because donkey is very, very foolish. Even though the donkey carries many, many heavy load on his back all day he's working, what payment does he get? A few sticks on the back and some dry grass. They were materialistic personalities. They're very foolish because they are working day and night, day and night. But how many chapatis can they eat at night? And all their hard work, who is benefiting from that? The donkey is not benefiting at all. But still he cannot see this. So one day, Sri Krishna and Balaram and the coward boys were cow grazing in Talvan. When you come to Brajamandu Purikram, you'll see 12 main forests are there in Vrindavan, and Talvan is very famous. Tal means like palm fruit, not like palms in Malaysia, but big like big, more than big than coconut and black. That very makes very good chutney also. Tal, very sweet smell. There were Krishna killed many demons, therefore the coward boys, they joked with Balaram. Oh Balaram, you should also show your strength, means these fruits, we want to get some, we want to drink some, therefore you can get some for us. Therefore Balaram began shaking these tile trees one after another, and those fruits were dropping on the ground, making a big noise, talk, talk, talk. So guarding that forest was foolish demon, Denikusur. Denikusur was not thinking this Brindavan belongs to Krishna and the devotees. Denikusur was thinking this garden belongs to me and my body, Kamsa Maharaj. Just like what is the real foolishness of the souls in this world, that is we think, oh, I am this body, and what belongs to this body is for my enjoyment. Srila Chivakarma used to say, if someone would come and ask, who is she? Oh, Maharaj, she's my wife. Oh, your wife, you invented her. <laughs> Did you create her? No. Then how you could say she is your wife? So thinking this is mine, but what do we have created? Really, in this world, what did we create except for stool? Nothing. But still we think this is for my enjoyment. Therefore, Denikasur is thinking this forest belongs for me, not for Krishna. This oh, is the original. It belongs to my immortal tongues. Kamsa. All the fruits should be given to, I will give to Maharaj Kamsa, and he will taste. So this is foolishness. 
So, when Dedekasso heard the sound of the falling tal fruits, top, 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 then he became very angry and he attacked Balaram. Just like sometimes for our own benefit, Guru gives us some instruction. But what happens? Disciple becomes angry. So sometimes we see like that. Therefore, Guru is so kind, he extends himself in the form of giving some instruction. But foolish disciple cannot understand that this instruction is for my benefit, not for the benefit of the spiritual master. So Denikasura became very angry. He could not understand the position of Baladev because he's a very foolish fellow. Therefore, he attacked Baladev and tried to kick Baladev with his hind legs. Susi Baladev, he grabbed the hind legs of the, de of the demon and spun him round like a centrifuge. And then he threw him up in the tree and Denikasura lost his life and passed to a neuron. All the other demons, the disciples of Denikasura, and sometimes blind, like Prahlad Maharaj was saying the other night, blind guru, blind disciple. Therefore, guru is blind, and the disciples must also be equally foolish. Often we see. They were the disciples of Denikasura, his family members. They also attacked Balaram, one after another. And Balaram mercifully spun them around and threw them each into the tree. Some of those donkeys had different colors, therefore it presented a very nice scenery. <clears throat> they were after all the demons were killed. Then the coward boys, they did not touch those fruits because those fruits were covered in stool and urine. Therefore they are unfit for Sri Krishna's, for Sri Krishna's consumption. Therefore Guru represents Baal. We always see Balaram in his hand, he has a plow and a club. They are the two weapons of Baladev Prabhu. Even though we cannot see them in Gurudev's hands at the moment, Still, Gurudev has these two functions. With the plow, he cultivates the heart, richetta, the heart of the disciple. Disciple, we have so many unwanted weeds, desires for mystic yoga, desires for material perfection, desires to enjoy this world. These are like unwanted weeds. So Guru, by his plow, in the form of his harikata, he cultivates the heart of disciple. And club means disciple has some demonic tendency then, bokamukha. And he also <laughs> destroys them like that. So Guru, in the form of ch merciful chastisement and the form of cultivation, he purifies the disciple. And then when the field is nice and clean, then he plants the seed of devotion. Not only that, then he waters the seed by hearing and chanting. Not only that, he protects the seed so no goat like Mayavadis or yogis or bad association will come. So Guru doing so much work for the disciple cultivating the field, planting the seed, watering, protecting, nourishing. And even that fruit that comes, Guru is not even tasting the fruit of that, that fruit of his de the disciples' devotion that is tasted by Radha Krishna. And therefore, where you can find such a merciful gardener as Sri Gurudev. And this pastime all understood by Balaram's killing Dena Gosu. Go Premananda. <laughs> The disciples who collected their donations are, by begging, they can give them to Guru Dev. <clears throat> oh, drama players should be ready. Beautiful, sweet pastimes are narrated. 
So now there is one pastime wherein Brahmaji, who is the creator of the whole material universe, uh, and he is actually a pure devotee of Krishna. There is one Leela called Brahmavi Mohan Leela. So once uh, Sri Krishna performed a pastime in which a snake demon came named Agha Asur and he was miles long and he had a huge mouth and Krishna had killed that demon by entering into his mouth and saving all the covered boys. At the time when that demon died, then a light came out from the top of the demon's head and entered into Sri Krishna's lotus feet. So Lord Brahma, because he always wants to see more sweet pastimes of Sri Krishna, he desired uh, to see some more exhibition of Krishna's wonderful uh, transcendental powers. So went into the forest every day and they were having so much ecstasy playing together in the forest. So many childhood games they were playing and all the, all the uh, sakas of Krishna, the little coward boys, their mothers were giving them lunch bags that they could take into the forest and in those lunch bags that they were carrying on their sticks uh, there were so many beautiful preparations that their parents had made for them, all different types of sweets and fruits. And Sri Krishna also was given by Mother Yashoda. So, when Krishna and his coward friends came into the middle of the beautiful Vrindavan forest, in an area which was somewhat open, so Sri Krishna suggested to his coward friends, Oh, here is a very nice place for us to sit down and have our lunch. So <clears throat> then, the, all the cowherd boys very eagerly, they began to sit around Krishna, everyone facing to Sri Krishna, because Sri Krishna is the life and soul of the cowherd boys. They always want to see him at every moment. And if Krishna disappears from their sight, they, be, they feel so much anxiety. So now they're, they're sitting in circles surrounding Krishna, and all the cowherd boys are facing towards Krishna, even from Krishna's back. And they're in lines and circles and circles. Thousands and thousands of covered boys. And all of them were taking leaves. Please in brief. Okay. So that you can finish. Okay. So, up to seven. Okay. So they were uh, taking their lunch like this. And all the covered boys were actually experiencing that Sri Krishna is looking at me. He's directly reciprocating with me because Sri Krishna is the center of all existence. So therefore, by Krishna's absolute position, they were all experiencing their direct relationship, exchanging rasa with Krishna and Sakya Ras. So now Lord Brahma was observing this uh, uh, situation, this scene, and Lord Brahma decided that he would test Krishna, because he was thinking, who is this small coward boy? He cannot be the Supreme Lord, he's just a little cowherd boy. So then he decided to test, to see if Krishna is indeed the Supreme Lord. So now Lord Brahma, uh, he made the, the calves gradually go farther and farther away. They were grazing in the nearby uh, grove and the fresh green grasses they were eating and gradually they were straying farther and farther away. Uh, and at that time, Lord Brahma, he took those calves by his own mystic power and he put them into a cave. And uh, in the meantime, Krishna noticed and the coward boys noticed that the, cow the calves had strayed away. So Krishna told all the coward boys, my dear friends, don't disturb that you're sitting here taking your meal. I will personally go and I'll search them out. You stay here. So Sri Krishna went and he began searching for the calves. And in the meantime, now Lord Brahma came and he stole all the covered boys from that place and he put them into a cave. Uh, so now, uh, Sri Krishna was searching here and there and he couldn't find the calves. And then he came back to the place where the covered boys were and he, now he saw that the covered boys were gone. So Sri Krishna, uh, he is actually the Supreme Personality of Godhead but he's appearing as a little covered boy in Naravatila, human-like pastimes. So Sri Krishna thought, oh, my mother Yashoda, she'll become very upset 
if I don't return with all the cowherd boys. So Sri Krishna, what did he do? He immediately expanded his inconceivable potency by his own expansion. He himself became every single cowherd boy. In complete detail, all of their bodily features looking exactly like them, the way that they dressed, their, their mannerisms, their voice, the way that they spoke, every single feature, even their cowherd sticks, everything. He became personally all the cowherd boys, and he personally became all of the calves as well, in complete detail. So now Sri Krishna performed the pastime of returning to the uh, village of Vrindavan. And when they were coming into the village of Vrindavan, as they usually would at the end of the day, all the dust was raising in the air, all the bridge basis were, were seeing Krishna arriving. And at that time, Sri Krishna, as the cowherd boys, entered into the house of every bridge basi mother. Uh, and he also entered into the cow shed, and he became the calf next to every single cow in Vrindavan. And why did Sri Krishna do this? Because all the Brijbasi uh, gopis, the elderly gopis, they consider Krishna to be their very own son. They love Krishna, even though he's the son of Mother Yashoda, they love Krishna more than they love their own sons. So Sri Krishna, knowing that they had a desire to have Krishna as their own son and to breastfeed Krishna with their own milk, he became their own sons. And then also uh, the cows, they also consider Krishna their dear most beloved uh, as like a son. They have Vatsalya Ras for Krishna. So they also wanted to feed their milk directly from their udders. So Krishna became the calves and he drank the milk of the mother cows directly from their udders. Also during this time period, Krishna remained like this for one entire year, uh, going and coming every day into the forest. And uh, during that time, um, I think it was Garba Rishi. Garba Rishi told that this is the most auspicious time for all the young gopi girls to be betrothed to the uh, gopi boys, to the, to the gopas. Sorry, gopas. And then there was this arrangement that they were betrothed. Why? Because all those young gopis, they loved Krishna with the mood of Madhurya Rasa. So Krishna fulfilled their desire actually and he became their husband in the form of these little cowherd boys. So in this way, Sri Krishna continued for one entire year. Uh, and in the meantime, Lord Brahma, because his time period is much longer than earthly time, one year of our time is equal to just a few moments of his time. So in the meantime, after Brahma had taken the calves and cowherd boys and put them in the cave, now he returned to his abode, Brahma Lok. But when he came to Brahma Lok, and he came to the gateway to his own palace, oh, the guards were stopping him from entering. And he was saying, why are you stopping me? And they said, no, no, you are bogus. You are imposter Brahma. You're not the real Brahma. We know. He says, what are you talking about? I am your master. I am Brahma. They said, no, our master is inside. And he told us that an uh, imposter Brahma would come. We should not allow him to enter. Then he began to think, Lord Brahma began to think, what's going on here? Because Krishna had expanded as Lord Brahma. So now he again returned back down to the earthly planet and he went now just to the area where he had stolen the calves and cowherd boys and he went into the cave and there he saw that the calves and cowherd boys were still in the cave. But then he came to the place where they were taking their lunch where he had stolen them from and he saw that the calves and cowherd boys were there. So then he thought, oh, what is going on here? And then he looked again well, in, the, in the caves and he saw they're still there. Now he used, because he has four heads, so he used both of his heads and he looked both places simultaneously and they're in both places. So now he began to realize, oh, oh, I've made a mistake. I have tested the mystic power of my master. Uh, so in the meantime, also during this year, uh, Baladev Prabhu, he noticed that uh, there was this special affection that was shown by the cowherd men when they would see their sons because one day they were herding the cows on the, on the Govardhan hill. And when the calves, when the, when the cows that they were herding saw their calves below, they went running down the hill. And then, then the cowherd men were thinking, what's going on here? They have so much affection for their calves. They began licking their calves. And even though during that year they gave birth to new calves, they liked their one-year-old calves even better. 
So then when the cowherd men saw at the bottom of the hill, they saw their own sons. They also went running down the hill and embraced their sons and smelling their heads. And they were overwhelmed by prey. So Lord Balaram was noticing this. And he was saying, how is this possible? They are exhibiting the same kind of love and affection that they have for Sri Krishna himself. Then he began to say, oh yes, now I understand. This is the mystic power of my brother, my younger brother, Sri Krishna. So even Baladev, who's the first expansion of Sri Krishna, sometimes if Krishna does not want him to understand what is going on with his potencies, even he cannot understand until Sri Krishna reveals this to him. And then Sri Krishna revealed the, the truth to Balaram. So now, um, so now Lord Brahma, uh, he realized his mistake and he wanted to apologize to Krishna. So at this time, when Lord Brahma was looking at this manifestation of all these cows, uh, of these calves and cowherd boys, Sri Krishna gave him this amazing vision. He began to be a witness that every single cowherd boy was a Vishnu form, an effulgent Vishnu form, and every single part, uh, decoration of their body, uh, all their cowherd sticks, all the calves, everything. They manifested thousands and millions of Vishnu forms. And he began to see the expanse of the whole universe. And now Lord Brahma was completely bewildered by the mystic power of Krishna. So later on, just after this, Lord Brahma, he came into a secluded place where Krishna was standing in the forest. And this little boy Krishna was holding a lump of foodstuffs in his hand. Lord Brahma came down on a swan carrier, huge effulgent form of Lord Brahma with four heads and golden crowns. And he came down and he threw himself full dandavat pranams like a stick on the ground in front of Krishna. And now he began to uh, shed tears and to bathe Krishna's lotus feet with his tears. And now he stood up and began to offer prayers to Krishna. And Krishna was standing there and one cowherd boy was standing next to Krishna and he was just leaning against Krishna like a friend and he was saying, oh, just look, four heads, four heads. So to them it was almost like a game. Huh? But Lord Brahma was taking this very seriously. So Lord Brahma offered what are called Brahma Stuti. In these prayers he glorified Sri Krishna's mystic power that I, many people think that I am very powerful uh, and that I have all great mystic power, I've created this universe, but I can say that I don't understand his mystic power at all compared to him. I'm like a firefly compared to the sun. And even if anyone could count all the atoms in the entire universe, they would never be able to understand the unlimited expanse of the Supreme Lord's potency. And he was praying like this to Krishna. He said, Atapite, Deva Padam Pujadvaya Prashana Leishana Brihita Eva He Janati Tatvam Bhagavan Mahim No Natanya Ekopi Chiram Vichin Van. That, oh my dear Lord, unless someone has a, a tiny particle of the mercy of the dust of your lotus feet, only then they can they begin to understand your greatness. Otherwise, even if they speculate for millions of years and try to understand your glories, they will not understand you at all. And then Lord Brahma, he prayed uh, in great humility that he could become just a piece of stone in brudge. He began to understand how great are the bridge bhasis, that they are playing personally with Krishna, that they have this personal relationship of breastfeeding Krishna like this. And he prayed to become even a stone in Vrindavan upon which uh, the sweepers uh, will, will uh, wash their feet, will scrub their feet after sweeping even the toilet drains. So in this way, Lord Brahma became very, very humbled. And finally, he prayed to Krishna, Aho Bhagyam, Aho Bhagyam, Nanda Gopa Vrajokasam, Yam Mitram Paramanandam, Purna Brahma Sanatanam. He said, Oh, these bridge bhasis, all these gopas and gopis, all the people of the village of Vrindavan, the, the covered people of Nanda, Braja, they are so fortunate, so fortunate. Yam mitram paramanandam purna brahma sanatanam. Oh, that supreme brahma, who is the supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead, who is the most powerful of all powerful, they're playing with him just like he's their ordinary friend. So in this way, Lord Brahma offered his prayers to Krishna, 
And then Sri Krishna, he forgave him uh, for his offense. And Lord Brahma returned back to his abode. And in this way, uh, he returned also the cowherd boys uh, and the calves. But actually, Lord Brahma could not steal the actual cowherd boys and calves. Why? Because just like when Ravana tried to steal Sita Devi, actually he did not steal the real Sita. Because, the re he, because no demoniac person can ever touch the real Sita. No person in the realm of Maya. So therefore, Maya Sita was manifested, and only he was able to steal her. Similarly, Lord Brahma was not able to steal the actual cowherd boys. He thought he was taking the cowherd boys and putting them in, into a cave, but that was only a manifestation of the illusory energy that he was putting into the cave. And in another prakosht, another dimension, those cowherd boys of Krishna, they were playing in another universe sitting on the banks of the Jamuna River. So in this way, the inconceivable glories of the Supreme Absolute Truth, Bhagavan Sri Krishna, he manifests as a beautiful little cowherd boy in Vrindavan, and that is the topmost feature of the Absolute Truth. Bhangsha Kalpaturu Vashtra I would like to make a very quick announcement on the behalf of Publication Assistance Team, which is a division of uh, GVP. As the publicational team, we would like to recruit and train devotees in the field of the book publication to make sure that Gurudev's books to be published in the most effective and the quest quickest way possible. Our beloved uh, Srila Gurudev said that his publication, there is still so much to do. Editors who are editing Chilla Gurudev's books are few. So, 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 so much manpower is needed. If you have any skill or any interest, any talent that you would like to use in the service of uh, book publishing, Gurudev's book publishing, please uh, come and see me after the class. Thank you very much. And the assembled devotees, we humbly offer this drama play of the life of Maharaj Parat. We beg the indulgence and forgiveness of everyone for any mistakes or errors committed. Once, long ago, there lived a great devotee, an emperor named Parat Maharaj. He left his home, which is the reservoir of all opulences, as though they were stool, and went to Pulamashram in Haridwar, India. There, in the gardens on the banks of the Gandaki River, he lived alone, engaging in pure devotional service to Sri Bhagavan, offering various kinds of paraphernalia, in this way, he remained satisfied and did not have the least desire for material enjoyments. love for Krishna increased more and more, his heart melted and all symptoms of ecstasy began to manifest within his body. One day, after finishing his morning duties, he began chanting his mantra. At that time, a pregnant mother deer, being thirsty, came there to drink. A lion roars? Hearing the lion's roar, the terrified deer jumped over the river and died in childbirth 
leaving her helpless child behind in the river. A deer is lying on the bank of the river, having given up her life. After hearing the fearsome roar of a lion, Oh, and here is a baby deer who has just been born, struggling in the waters of the river. Here, my dear, my darling dear, come with me. I will take you to my ashram. There, there. Maharaj Bharat gradually became attached to this young deer and always thought of it affectionately. of 
time, Maharaj Bharat's death at last came. Leaving this world, with his mind absorbed in the young deer, he was forced to take birth as a deer. Because of his devotee, him to remember all of his past devotional service, even though he was in the body of a deer.
even a better choice. Why we don't take this instead? Look at him. He's perfect candidate for offering to our goddess. Oh. 